At Capella University, education is as smart as the world around us. With the FlexPath format, you can take classes at your own pace, set your own deadlines, and even leverage your previous experience to move faster. Now that's smart. Learn more at capella.edu. Right Night is a talk show with published authors, writers, and content creators discussing both the creative and technical sides of writing, as well as the industry surrounding it, from novels to screenplays to comics and more. And now, here's your host, author Travis I. Sivart. Here we go. And welcome to Right Night. Tonight's topic is going to be balancing social media. We're going to discuss things such as how do you do your creative thing as well as do the advertising when you don't have a team behind you and the money behind you to do it for you. Um, I am Travis Sivart. I am the author of my latest series that I have book one and two out in the past few months. Working on book three that's up for pre-order is portals there it is that's right book one and book two book three as i said is up for pre-order mystics and monoliths and i write that live on the stream at tra or twitch.tv slash travis tavern talks hold on get a cat in the way keep moving get the joys of working from home um <laughs> oh, disclaimer, I want to let everybody know who's listening to the podcast. We do have a live audience here with us in chat. When you hear this noise, that means I want to read something from chat, though it might not come up on, because it might fit in more organically without having to cut these poor guys off to talk about that. Um, and as for our live viewers, we are recording this as a podcast, so if we are not quite as interactive as normally and only pulling the very relevant things, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you for understanding. Let's have uh, uh, Michael introduce himself first this time. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Michael Thompson. I am an independent author and illustrator. And my latest book is Chicken Boy and yeah. the Might of the Monkey Man. Action, adventure, superhero, fantastic. Uh, wrote, check it out. This, yes? You wrote the first one when you were how old? I wrote the first one. I wrote and illustrated and released the first one when I was 13 years old. But it was based on a story that I had written even earlier when I was nine years old. So uh, this was what began my independent author journey. And I just recently uh, returned to the, uh, the superhero that started all, Chicken Boy, the Wing Defender. So you can find this and all my other stories at michaelthompsonbooks.com. I also couldn't help but notice uh, your, your two-fisted drinking tonight. Oh yes, I am. I'm dual wielding liquids. I've got my chamomile tea, like Gwen Stefani, and I've got my good old H two O from the heavens above. <laughs> Very good, Aaron Kennedy. Hi, uh, I'm Aaron Kennedy, author of Persona Non Grata, uh, first in the Ships of Valor series. I've been a technical writer for 25 years. Been published in uh, the Army Times and the NCO Journal. Uh, that's Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, last name Kennedy, just like the dead president. Uh, Michael didn't mention it, but he's Michael, common spelling. Last name is T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Uh, that's at michaelthompsonbooks.com. And then Travis uh, I. Sivart, if you're looking for him. That's Travis, common spelling, I. And then Sivart is Travis spelled backwards. And you can find us on Amazon or certain websites. Just Google us or go straight to Amazon and pull up our books and grab a copy. Okay. Um, also wanted to make sure anybody who is in chat or if you're listening on podcast, you could email us at right night show. That's W R I T E N I G H T show at gmail.com and drop your thoughts and comments, birthday wishes, messages to other people that, you know, watch the show or people that don't that you want to watch the show. Um, right. I, did I get all that? I think I got all that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's uh, break right into this. Uh, one of the worst things I have found as a writer when you're a team of one or even a team, if you have somebody in your household or a friend that helps you out with certain things such as moderating the chat or helping out with social media, it is so hard to figure out that balance of how much do I, how much time do I dedicate to creating versus how much time do I dedicate to social media and which social medias do i use youtube instagram oh, yeah. 
twitch.tv, Facebook. There's so many things out there. How do you effectively use things like Snapchat or whatnot to, for a business aspect? All these things get so confusing. And then once you add in, it's not social media, but it's just as important, live interactions or events such as conventions and book signings and beta reader groups and all these other things, it really can very easily become overwhelming where you just don't know how to schedule your world to create a world. Um, yeah. So, Aaron, I'm going to look at you first because well, so you're probably, to, to just harpoon you right away, man, you're probably the worst at this. I am the worst at this? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, I'm horrible. I am absolutely horrible. When we talk about what our weaknesses, what makes a good uh, a, a good hero is their weaknesses, their flaws. Social media, I have social media so that I know when family dies. Um, and I've let that skill atrophy uh, because it was the least important one that I had going on between <sighs> everything else that I do. And, and let um, me throw that in there for you. In, in Aaron's weak shield of defense he is working on like <laughs> oh another God. doctorate and a, a master's in uh, i don't know plumbing and and pounding <laughs> nails and all these other things as well as working his full-time job and a side job and writing and uh, he's got a huge amount on his plate so aaron perhaps in this it could be sure. a good learning tool for you of how to get the most basic skill set for social media. Oh, absolutely. And don't get me wrong, it's one of those, Travis gives a great explanation of what's going on, but there are certain things that I need to use it for. Yes, I, I let the skill atrophy because I wasn't using it, and that's the big piece, uh, big takeaway there. As you get back into the more publishing of the books, I'm working on the Icarus Black series, I'm going to need to build that my fan base up for one, prior to release, um, it, or at least have the structure developed. Right. Uh, but I'm also a master tradesman, uh, HVAC, electrical, working on plumbing. Uh, I'm now a locksmith as well. Um, it, right. It, um, but Breaking into use... the hearts of readers. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. It, hey, as Robert Heinlein said, specialization is for insects. Ah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a firm believer that why shouldn't I, I don't necessarily need to be the best at something, but I do need to know how to do it. Um, and the ever famous, write what you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, every skill that I add on is one more thing that I can write about. Yeah, um, that's true. Um, <clears throat> Michael, do you have some opening thoughts on at the core? Can you name the most important thing to have for your uh. social media arsenal and toolbox? Uh, the most important thing to have, and um, and Aaron, this is this is I'll, I'll say I'll say this to you, is to try and make it fun, because um, and and we're gonna cover all the other stuff like like scheduling and and things like that and and making a lot of things in advance, but I think if you post the type of thing that you wish your favorite authors or your favorite artists, um. Uh, anything that you're a fan of posted um, or if you you see what other people are posting and you take inspiration from that um, th that's the reason that's the reason to make a post it's like it's like why why should I why should I get involved in this because if you now anytime you add something new to your uh, uh, to your strategy as an author uh, there's going to be a moment of like, uh, a whole new skill that I need, that I need to learn. And, sure. um, and that's an, and it, and it can be, even if it's like very, very simple. Um, like I, I wasn't on Instagram for the longest time because I'm like, I don't want to learn a new social media, but Instagram is now the main thing that I, that I post on, uh, cause it's on my phone and it's always ready and it's visual. And I like that. Um, at M Thompson underscore books, by the way become my friend follow me there um but 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 having fun i think is 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 the main thing post when you have something interesting to say and you know don't be too consumed by the schedule that is important um to where you're just uh 
you're you're just hollering that that hey I'm here. Um, try to make it fun. To build on that, um, first thing I would recommend is a newsletter. And this is something I mm-hmm. am woefully bad at. I have one. Um, I track it, but I only use it a handful of times a year. And another thing very handy, if you're going to publish and be sold on Amazon, go get your author page. Anytime you click on somebody's book and yeah. it has their name, you can click on that. And if you scroll down below their bio, there's a paragraph right underneath their picture, their bio, and then it says, are you an author? Claim your author page. Go do that. Uh, the reason you want to do this is people can follow you on Amazon, and Amazon will send them an email when you release something new. That's a bare minimum. And some mm-hmm. people find great success with that alone. Something else I'm going to tell well, you? Good. Uh, on the flip side of that, you also get recommended mm-hmm. when whenever somebody buys your book, they recommend other people's books. And they they have a lot an, uh, an algorithm that just says, oh, okay – Here's what we got going on. When you have your author's page, anything in your inventory becomes fodder for other people when they buy a book and go, oh, you bought Michael Thompson's book. You'll probably like Aaron Kennedy and Travis Sivart's books as well. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if people are searching all of our books together, they'll right. start aggregating us. Um, here's something else to look at is uh, I totally lost that thought. Um Yep, totally lost it. No idea what I was going to say. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay. Oh, we'll I, put it on the side of it, It'll come back. It was important enough. It, it'll come back. Um, newsletter, Amazon page if you're selling on Amazon. Um, now let's talk about social medias because each social media speaks to a different demographic in general. You're not going to catch a 15-year-old reader on Facebook very often. It's just not – Facebook doesn't pull. It pulls an older audience now. Instagram is kind of your mid-ground. Um, your faster, hotter thing, Snapchat is kind of out now. TikTok kind of blew it out, and now TikTok is fading with the political stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, you do have to bounce around. LinkedIn is another great way business-wise to network. And if I can throw this out, Hootsuite is one example – of a place you can go, link your social media accounts, and put one post up that goes to multiple social media accounts. If you go in for free, it's three social media accounts. If you mm. pay their minimum, it's 10 accounts, I believe, but you also get unlimited posts per month. Um, with the free one, you can schedule posts. All of them you can schedule posts. But with the free one, you can only have so many at a time. I think it might be 10 at a time. So if you schedule them every Sunday, you sit down and hit that schedule and put out those two or three social media posts that are going to go out at this time, etc. Matter of fact, totally forgot to do it for the shows this week. I should probably have done that. Wednesday tries to – I try to make that my social media day, but I've been so hard focused on writing this week that prior to – you got prioritized. Um, yeah, it's a balance. It, it really well, is. And to give me and, a second, Aaron, I'll pass it right back to you to touch mm-hmm. on what Michael said. And I think we're going to expand on this a lot many times during this episode. When you're posting, don't just post ads. Don't just post commercials. As Michael said, you have to make it fun. People go to your social media, A, for information, B, for a little bit of you. And so putting it on Instagram, I have that on Hootsuite where I, that's where I schedule my business posts. Here's a book, here's a show, whatever. But I also have it on my phone. So when I take a picture of that cool praying mantis on my front porch, I have that linked. <coughs> so it automatically sends it over to Facebook and Twitter because Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are my primaries. Hold on. My cat is sitting mm-hmm. on my mouse and highlighting things on my computer. Um <laughs> So that that's an opener. That's all opener. Aaron, what were you going to say? Well, I mean, we've entered this era of self-publishing. Um, yep. And one of the big things that we run into is we're running a small business. Mm-hmm. We're, it's a one-man shop for the most people. I, yes. you know, Michael's got a, a manager that takes care of a bunch of stuff for him. <laughs> Not, um, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think she's more moral support. Yeah, well, yeah. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you need that as well. That is no, but, super uh, important. Which is, which is big, which is major. I, yeah. I love you, Mom. And we, <laughs> With MailChimp, you get a whole lot more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. That means you can connect your data to make more informed, smarter decisions. And you get powerful automation tools like our customer journey builder to ensure you never miss an opportunity to turn shoppers into loyal customers. So if you're ready to integrate your marketing and boost sales, get started today at MailChimp.com slash smart marketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses. We, we don't have the big four later. backing us. Right. <laughs> Uh, but we don't have the big four backing us, so but they're also not taking seventy percent of our profits away. I remembered um, what I was going to The trade off is mm. oh go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, uh now in the KDP era and all that, they get thirty percent, we get the other seventy Thank um, you, Tracy. for the most part. Um which <laughs> thanks, Tracy. Um but they uh it puts a lot of onus back on us and we're running a business. If you want to be successful in business, you've got to handle your own operations, which is writing. It's writing and selling books, your own support, which is going to be your personal HRs, your 1099s, all that garbage. Um, but also the social media aspects of it. And I'm, I'm the worst one in the world about it. It's not that I don't know it. I've got a friggin' business degree. I just don't do it. Um, and I get harped on by Travis about this, but on the flip side of that, I yell at him about certain things as well and go, what the crap, man? <laughs> but that's part of the moral uh, but support. But that's why we have a network. Right. It, oh, it's absolutely. part of the moral support. And my two points that I'm so just jumping in the middle of everything and throwing at you guys. Uh -huh. um, moral support, your friends and family, your longstanding fans, your very intense fans, they're very important for telling you you're doing a good job. But also they talk about your stuff. And that's super important, too, whether you're yeah. sitting there at a book signing and, and Michael's support is standing off to one side, chatting with people and pulling them in just by being personable and awesome. Um, or just letting you know, hey, it's OK if you take a break today or maybe haven't you had long enough a break? Don't you need to do some stuff real quick? Here's a sandwich. Get back in there. The other thing I wanted to mention, going back to. Amazon, and I'm going to speak a lot about this tonight because it's my primary source of sales. Um, that algorithm Aaron mentioned, there is ways as readers, viewers, friends, you guys can help. Even if you didn't buy the book on Amazon, you can review it on Amazon. The more reviews, when you hit certain milestones in your reviews, I believe it's uh, 25, then 75, unless it's changed, and it may have, um, it increases your visibility. So when somebody buys a book and they get that email with their seat, those recommended books or authors on the bottom of that email, your chances increase because people who bought that book also bought your book. So, yeah. guys, those reviews, especially if somebody hands you, even if it's a beta reader copy, if it's a free copy, go drop that review and help out your favorite author by doing that on whatever platform they sell on. Um, Goodreads is good for that too, but all these things. That is for sure appreciated. And it's just it's just cool. I mean, that's uh, interaction is um, the coolest part of social media. You know, we, we're always thinking about, you know, the marketing aspect and, and being the, like the, the thing, the, the small little experience that you're publishing, but it's the interaction that occurs underneath that or, uh, the fact that, or the, the, the potential that that thing might grow legs and, and, and go off and have a life of its own and, and, uh, travel onto other people's, uh, um, devices. That's, that's the cool thing. In so that, interaction is, yeah, building the best the part of it. thing for Michael there is, uh, mm -hmm. guys, when you do see your friend or your favorite author or whatever post, the more you comment, the more other people see it because social media is built to share things you like with people in your network. So by commenting on an author's post or sharing it, again, for those algorithms, for those individual social medias, it's invaluable. It's super helpful. Okay. Well, I mean, on, on well, that note, friggin', what you're doing is you're helping develop content for them. 
um, and which is all a funnel to our ultimate strategy. Uh, Michael had mentioned this early that you got to have a strategy. Our stra- the big strategy that's the ten thousand foot view is sell books. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's to get the word out there. Um, below that, we've got the typical strategy, operations, tactics. Operations are a specific book or a specific series that we're, everything's kind of tied into. And then tactics is, hey, interaction with the people. What are, what are we actually tweeting about at this point? The content. Um, Michael's probably the best one in person uh, when he comes to being in person because, hey, here's a bookmark. Yeah. Read my book. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but he doesn't do a hard sell. It's one of those he interacts with people, which gets a chance to make a sale. Um, whereas you got guys like me, I'm kind of fire and forget, put the book out there, did a limited uh, bit of social media at the time of release, and then have let other priorities get in the way. Hmm. So if I could jump yeah. in, I want to drop down some suggested core guidelines. First of all, know what social yes. media you're going to. Um, again, newsletter and where you're selling the books. I, I pointed that hard and heavy. Okay, that that is your core right there. Uh, a newsletter is something people sign up for. That means they're already interested. You already have an in. They want to see your content in their email box. The most personal way to interact with somebody online. The most direct way, I should say. How about that? Um, So choose your social media careful. Realize what kind of audience that social media gets and also realize what times to post. I love to post at 2 a.m. Horrible time to post anywhere for anything. Um, And again, depending what country you're in, et cetera, this can change. But uh, you want to make sure you're posting at the right times. This is a quick Google search. The information is out there. Somebody else has already done this work. You just have to put the time in to gather that information. So – Yep. You're going to hear me talk about Facebook, Twitter, Instagram quite a bit because that's what I primarily use. You guys jump in on other stuff or the viewers can throw in certain things they have found. Um, So Facebook tends to be an older audience now. Instagram, again, 25 to 45. And Twitter, people are like, oh, that's just a dumpster fire and people – screaming into the void that's all all social media is it's a matter of how you post that makes people pay attention to it uh here's another quick suggestion oliver yeah i don't recommend posting political stuff on your social media some of these opinions i realize they're very near and dear but You, you can hit a train wreck pretty quickly. So just do it with caution and wisdom. Yes, Aaron? Well, uh, J.K. Rowling found that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, her Twitter feed is a dumpster fire from because she's got political leanings in various regards. Um, and she built this amazing fan base. And then everything kind of turns into a dumpster fire when you start getting into, oh, she makes comments in the wrong, in the wrong direction on specific issues. And then, Oh, I'm out. Right. Because uh, social media is like an experience and it's an extension of the experience of, of what your product is. So if, if you're putting out a product that has, um, those things as themes, then it might be expected that you, you would talk about them. Um, but uh, if you if you write a, a product that's escapism where uh, people can dive into that, immerse in that and maybe forget about uh, those types of themes, um, then it's like, wait, this is what I signed up for, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, if you're so, yeah, you want to kind of you, you want to if you're writing historical fiction uh, regarding equal rights. Yeah, you might want to go ahead and comment on Black Lives Matter. I have many friends that write LGBTQ books, and absolutely, that is your audience, and you are writing to that audience. So to put that in there, that's that's smart. But Mm yes, still be wary and be careful and read that thing a third time before you hit post or send or whatever it is. Because we've even seen people like Matt Damon 
some people that just seem untouchable uh, sports stars, uh, music stars, and they put one thing up on their social media and suddenly they're they're losing audience. So it's it's a fine line. Be careful. So yeah, I mean, think about like, um, if you if you're if you're reflecting on. Uh, whether whether your favorite author or your favorite artist or or uh, what whatever whatever you're a fan of think think about what's your favorite thing that they post or what what do you wish that they post like do you like seeing behind the scenes stuff what 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 would you expect or what would you wish that you would see and then see if you can try and like create your multimedia experience um, because that's what social media gives you the opportunity to create, mm-hmm. um, to work in conjunction with your product that you're putting out there. See if you can enact that. A basic, a uh, couple few, in your- uh, do you want to go before I go, Aaron? Go ahead. A couple few basic skills you want to learn before you immerse yourself in your social media experience is basic photo editing and basic video editing. Now, I don't mean Mm -hmm. a 30-minute video. I mean a 30-second video. Um, And this is all quite often done on the computer that we all carry in our pocket, our cell phones. They're right there. They're easy to use. They make them intuitive for the most part. Um, Learn. Play with it. Put it up there. Be prepared to delete posts because put up a junk post. Put up a post saying, I'm learning this. And then delete it later if you need to. But get some basic photo editing skills. There are free programs out there such as Canva.com. It's wonderful for creating pictures, and that is something you could tie right into things like Hootsuite. And you could do almost all of these for for free with an option to pay more money. Um, I have never had great results, by the way, when it comes to paying to boost a post. A recent post that went across... Facebook and Instagram owned by the same company in case somebody didn't know of that. <clears throat> I paid $51. I had 7,300 how did they call it? Uh, basically it clicks no impression impressions which means it showed up in somebody's same thing stream no it's not because that same email, Oh sorry sorry clicks half and after impressions. Right. One click out of the 7,300 views and that $51, <laughs> I paid $51 for one click. So yeah. that could be one of two things. That could be I'm aiming for the wrong audience. It could be how I wrote the post. Um, now, that I had a lot more likes and a lot more, you know, that kind of click. But to follow that link through and show up where I'm trying to get them to go, one click. Um, so... <laughs> That's another skill set, writing that elevator pitch that makes somebody go, oh, I want to know more. I'm going to click the link. And that's where you go back to what was being said, I think by Aaron, if I'm not mistaken, is, you know, what would make you click on something? What, Mm -hmm. when you're watching somebody you admire or follow or like their work, what besides going, oh, yeah, cool, they've got something, what makes you click it? Is it the words? Is it the image? Is it a personal note? Is it strictly professional escapism? And learn a little bit about that at least. And that's hard for a lot of us creative folks that are kind of naturally introverted. Well, yeah, that goes back to the uh, the self-published versus the publisher and things like that. We don't have a room full of people doing this for us. Uh, I actually saw this one on one of the political things. Somebody had forgotten to remove the generic uh, response before they posted their thing. So they had a laundry list of, hey, post this after the debate. Um, Just a bunch of them. But they left generic post on there. So you feel like you're being fooled. Um, And that gets into kind of the artist versus the author or artist versus the art piece, and then people who handle social media in an amazing fashion. Uh, George Takei. George Takei is the king of social media. It's not him. Right. He may be running the strategy, but he's got a team of people doing this for him. Mm. Um, so 
he's never going to have generic post such and such a time. He's going to, everything seems like it's coming from him. Right. Um, which is what you want. Um, but sooner or later, hopefully, you get big and it's not you doing it. It's your assistant or it's your social media rep or it's your whoever you deem it. Which right gonna now, cause at could, our level, our <laughs> assistants are things like Hootsuite or setting a timer on your Facebook post <laughs> so it posts at a certain time. Uh, so at Capella University, education is as smart as the world around us. With the FlexPath format, you can take classes at your own pace, set your own deadlines, and even leverage your previous experience to move faster. Now that's smart. Learn more at capella.edu. You know the old saying, selling like hotcakes? What does that even mean? What is a hotcake anyway? They should change it to selling like Hondas, because right now, Hondas are selling faster than ever. Probably because they're so rugged, long-lasting, and fuel-efficient. And if you want one, you should get to your local Honda dealer right away. Check out the eight-passenger pilot, or maybe the adventurous passport. But you gotta do it fast, because Hondas are selling like, well, Hondas. New models are arriving now. Don't wait. See your local Honda dealer today. So you don't have to worry about it later. Take a couple hours to sit down and plan these posts and schedule these posts so they fall out naturally. And then the stuff that you snap a picture like me and my, my cats, they fall in between. And that way when somebody who is new to your social media comes and goes, let me see what this person has posted before I just stepped into this, you know, what is there? And they get little pieces of fun. They get a little piece of you. They get a little bit of insider information. Then they get an ad that shouldn't feel like an ad. <clears throat> well, and th yeah. there's another big thing that kind of comes into play with that is, yes, you can auto schedule these things, but maintain situational awareness because the world's constantly changing mm -hmm. um and you can end up looking like a total ass out there and nothing that you even if even though you can delete things it's not gone the great uh, james example. gunn okay. uh, guardians of, hmm? go ahead uh james gunn of uh, guardians of the galaxy got fired as a writer because of posts that were a decade old or as old as they could possibly mm -hmm. be. Right. Because um, they were just archived. Yeah, things live forever. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, you, you don't want to rely on things living for forever either. Because mm -hmm. at any time, like, there can be a glitch in the system. Like, I had, I had made a YouTube account at one point and, and there was a glitch and then, like, it all just went down, um, which was a real shame. And then I, and I remade my YouTube, which... And YouTube is another uh, another thing that we haven't talked about yet, but that that's that's a social media. Um, so 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 yeah, uh, w yeah. Whenever you post things, you want to imagine that you're saying it over a loudspeaker. You know, Im imagine imagine that it's it's being flown across the sky on a big blimp or something. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it's public. It is, and you're looking to be a public figure. At this point in time, yeah. <clears throat> Even though that is not your end goal, you are becoming one, whether you want to or not. And and in that aspect, you're becoming a. Target. Well, you're gaining influence. You are. Um, and remember, there are people out there that started out, not a writer, not an artist, not anything. But I like to put on makeup, and now they're making millions of dollars because of their Instagram post or their Facebook post or whatnot or their YouTube channel. Um, and, yeah, anything they've said is out there. One great example of backing out of and being able to cancel before it goes live, and this is a huge example, the original live-action Spider-Man with uh, Tobey Maguire, mm -hmm. the yep. big still picture was him on top of, like, the Empire State Building with the American flag and the Twin Towers behind them. They pulled that mm. because it was coming out, and but 9-11 happened right before it came out. And they had to mm. pull that advertisement. Well, what, Aaron? Oh, and the same thing happened to Lilo and Stitch. A major oh, yeah, piece of the animation that. had to be redone because of nine eleven, really? Yeah, yeah. Yes. There was a thematic. There was a plane um, 
uh, there was a like a crash landing or something. Um, so thematically, they ended up going a different route. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So be aware of what's going on in the world. Be conscious of it. Um, you don't want to have something that will be misconstrued as a political statement if something happens between the day you schedule it and the day it posts. If something in the real world happens that your post can now be taken wrong. Um, yeah, that is something important to keep in mind with with the scheduling aspect of it, you know, because on, on, one, on one hand, you're, you're handing it off to robots to take away a little bit of that stress, but on the other hand, there, there's a new stress that could arise. So there's positive and negatives to everything. But yeah, our big PR backup is algorithms, and that's largely supported by grassroots movements of our fans, our readers, our friends, our family, commenting, sharing, etc. Realize your value to others in that aspect. Um, every time I see something from Michael, I try to at least click like and if I have the energy and wherewithal that moment, make sure I comment which that's something I'm mm-hmm. not great at. Um, and if you ever do post, make sure you are replying to every person that says something. Um, even if it's just clicking like on it, uh, putting down a smiley, you know, whatever, until you're large enough that that ball is rolling on its own. That little bit, I remember the first time I... I, my, maybe not the first time. I posted to an author that I really liked. And she followed me on Twitter. And I took a screenshot of that. And I reposted it. Look who's following me now. It meant a lot to me. And It does, yeah. Yeah, whatever you think about yourself, somebody else thinks a lot more. And then somebody else thinks a lot less. So, you know, you've got to... <laughs> and social media is where you come to talk about that. <laughs> right. So just be aware, you clicking like, somebody could be holding up their phone going, look, Michael Thompson liked my reply to him. This is awesome. Or he said, thanks a lot. That's great. He spoke to me. Um. Yeah, it's about creating relationships and, you know, friendships. And uh, it, it is really, really cool. And so when you have those cool social media experiences and then you try to uh, remember that and then apply that in your own uh, when, when, you're, when you're the person posting and, and you're the person interacting, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Like what, what, what made my day when I, was, um, uh, when I was the one engaging with mm-hmm. the content? Now let's talk about hashtags. And I'll run with this okay. for a bit, then you guys jump in. Hashtags, yeah, that's a good topic. when it first happened, annoyed the hell out of me. Especially when you'd see 20, 30 mm-hmm. hashtags <laughs> at the end of something. It drove me nuts. Each social media handles hashtags slightly different. You only want a couple in Twitter. You can bombard it on Instagram. And Facebook is somewhere in between. Um, putting it in the middle of your post is okay as long as you don't you know you don't want to make a whole paragraph and have 20 hashtags in that paragraph but throw pepper a couple through there and put a couple at the end that's great instagram i'm going to focus on that one right now instagram is great for hashtags and you definitely want to use it on every instagram post and the reason you want to do that and you want to use and this is the balance of You want to make them broad enough terms that people are searching for them because people can now follow a hashtag. Instead of following uh, Bruce Willis, they can follow action movies, hashtag action movie, Um, you know, uh, fantasy. But fantasy is very general, and if they search for that, you are now lost in a sea of whatever. Swords and Sorcery, a little more specific. Michael... Our last episode, you said you created your own genre for your book, uh, Folklore Fantasy, I believe you said, yeah? Yeah, Folkloric Fantasy. How many people are searching that term? So he could put it in there, and it's Nobody. Wise, but not yet. <laughs> but two years from now, mm-hmm. we don't know. Still, maybe nobody, but still, maybe. Uh, right. It's a thing now. It's a lit RPG, literary role-playing game. 
Well, five years ago, nobody knew what that right. was. Now it's a big thing. Um, so mm-hmm. when you're dropping your hashtags, putting general things in there, if you put fish because you went fishing or my cat's name is fish or whatever, a lot of people searching that, they're not looking for what you posted. Um, but if you put hashtag my cat is named fish, nobody is searching for that. It's just cute at that point in time if somebody actually reads your hashtags. So learn your hashtags, learn the good ones, keep a list um, on your phone or on your computer, keep a, a document where you have these saved so you can copy paste the ones that apply every time, which I have found nothing applies every time. Um, right. But yeah, it's just still something you can keep three or four different paragraphs of hashtags depending what kind of post you're putting up. Cute, cuddly cat pictures. Maybe somebody comes and looks at my cat, checks out my other stuff and goes, this guy's a writer too. I like this. Yeah. I, I think it's quite funny um, to use hashtags as well. I mean, in the practical sense for sure, but but uh, I think it's funny when you use them just in an ironic sense. Mm-hmm. Um, like I liked, uh, I did... Um, I, I was I, w- I was drinking my first hot cocoa of the season, and I was like, "Oh, this is great!" And then I took I took a picture of my mug, which happened to be one of one of the mugs that I sell. And then I was like, I was like, first I just elated over the over how much I was enjoying my beverage, and then I was like, "And it tastes even better out of this chicken boy mug available at michaelthompsonbooks.com <laughs> slash merch." Hashtag subtle plug, you know. So yeah, and that's cool. It's like it's almost like an inflection. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've you've poked fun at yourself, which I always appreciate when people can make fun of themselves a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Having fun with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So going over the basics again: newsletter, Amazon author page. If you're selling there, choose a couple things. If you can get on something like Hootsuite, and there are others besides Hootsuite, I just mentioned that one because I use it, they make life easier where you can go in and schedule, you can see the results of it, and down the road when you start getting sponsors, if you're not writing books, if you're doing a podcast or a YouTube channel, um, tracking this stuff will become important because when you approach a sponsor or a sponsor approach you, they want black and white numbers. And knowing where to find that information is important. If you're on Facebook and you have a Facebook page for your books or your author persona, um, there is there's analytics, and it breaks it down for every single thing I could do. I could do it on Twitch. I can do it on YouTube. I can do it on um, Instagram. And Hootsuite pulls them all together into one. And to see what social media is responding best to your posts gives you an idea and also which posts are hitting which ones are getting attention um yeah so and and try different things with your social media posts try it straight up you know here's a world be a (laughs) world or try oh my god i just wrote this book and i'm loving this one character bob he is incredible and goofy and you know so you do the personal touch and you do the broad spectrum what they see every day in other ads uh, because we're wired to that now and learn from these people what sort of posts are what sort what sort of posts would you say are are your favorite to make and then what what in your experience do you think um uh invites the most engagement i hate making any post (laughs) okay introverts unite Yeah, yeah it's uh I want to write a book, and I want to write the next book. That's that's what I'm fair. Loving. Um, all this other stuff, I have to put post-it notes. I have to write it in my schedule, and and I still forget, <clears throat> even though I have these tools at my fingertips. Um, but out of the ones that I do make, I love sharing sharing a book. I I love putting that cover up. I am so happy. I'm so proud. I have this new thing. I'm excited about it. And that's something else. When you don't get a lot of clicks or likes or recognition, don't take it personal. Don't feel downhearted about it because it's very easy. 
when I go to YouTube, Michael, I like to do very personal one-on-one -on -one discussions about writing and whatnot. Um, I also don't like to do a lot of editing. I, I like that kind of raw feeling of this is me. And that is not to say that's the best way to go. Again, study your audience, study your responses, try different things, see what works. And just because something doesn't work once doesn't mean it won't work the 12th time. Or just because right. something worked the first 10 times doesn't mean it's going to keep on working. I think one big hint to yeah. is don't flood your social media with only one type of thing. Right. Yeah, for sure. Diversify, diversify, diversify. Yeah. Well, there's been times I've gone to people's whatever social media and, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to follow this person. Let me see what they have. See, I want to see if I want to see their content potentially daily. And mm -hmm. it's all ads, all ads. And I'm like, I'm not interested. And this yeah. is possibly horrible, but especially when I go to like publishers' websites, it's all ads for other people's books that I'm not interested in that genre. And I'm like, why would I follow this publisher? Am I going to puppy dog off yep. them hoping they see me, recognize me, and say something? Eh, I've got other things to do. What about you, Mike? Because you're right. great at this. You you make all kinds of awesome things. Well, uh, I, I I think I could be better, um, but <laughs> we all can. Like I I I love I I love like making um, films. Mm -hmm. Fil film was always like a hobby of mine, so I like making like little short films, and I have like all of these like self aware, ironic little sketches, basically, which which is like. Take, taking a component of the thing that I that is a hobby of mine, and then and then bringing that over into the marketing aspect. Like I, at one point, I want to have like um, I, I, I want to have a, a lot of new new t shirts and stuff come out. And I was thinking I might like have a bunch of my friends like like march in a march in a line and then and, and like showcase all of the products or something. Um, bring bring my friends into the uh, so I got I got all these these ideas. Um, but I lo I love making those, but. That's hard. That's really hard to reach an audience for. I think. I think it's it's easier to, and this is satisfying as well. Just like have a really interesting image. I think it's always important to have some sort of visual aspect to it. I think most social, social media, media, they, yeah, they allow some form of visual aspect. And if you have something that's eye grabbing or interesting or just a really good picture, and then you couple that with just a perfect caption or. Uh, well, picture points a thousand uh, it, is worth a thousand words. Friggin' 140 characters and all that. Exactly. A couple and things, uh, when you're done, Mike, mm -hmm. we'll talk about a couple things you've done. Go on. Okay. And um, and just I, I mean, from the most the most the most basic, it, it takes it takes up more space. Like if you're scrolling through Facebook, um, you can have stuff that's text or photos, and photos they take up more space and. Um, so, so it, it'll, it'll have a bigger block in, in the, mm -hmm. in the newsfeed and, and more, more of an opportunity for it to grab someone's eye. <clears throat> Here's something I will recommend. If you're doing videos, don't make it where every single one of your videos has to have the sound on. Cause a lot of people scroll at work right? and they don't want to turn on the sound. Now, Michael's yeah. done a few things that I really admire on social media. One, when he's at a live event, hold on, can't, come in, come in. Um, one thing he did, um, when he's at an event, he takes multiple pictures, and then he posts these pictures of other people holding the orb of World of the Orb. And this mm. is a great way to connect those people and interact after the fact to remind them when they saw so much that day, hey, there was this guy. Another thing he did, he had a book coming out, and I think it was Chicken Boy, but I'm not sure. Forgive me for that, Michael. Um, and you had short videos of, like, Bigfoot. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, that was it. That was Chicken Boy. Yeah. I do. And that was, even without sound, it was visually caught my eye. And it was fun. And it mm, was thank silly. You. And it was his, this is coming. It was his countdown thing. And at, at, it was so funny. Tell us a little bit. It about was so funny. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's a little behind the scenes for you because I'm 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 actually I'm I'm filming and also like wearing. Uh, there was when I was doing the the countdown video, I had bananas in a basket, and then I would have a Sasquatch hand uh, uh, reach on like the, the fingers would wiggle and grab a banana and then dart off screen. And so the number of bananas would equal the amount of days, and then and then up on up on the screen would flash, you know, the number, you know, this many days until up until the release of Chicken Boy 4 because it had been so long since I had released a Chicken Boy book. I had the original trilogy and then uh and then I did the novels and then I felt the compulsion to return. Um and so and so that's what I did. That that that, that was really that was really fun. And then finally uh for the day of release I had uh the you know Sasquatch like hand place bananas which I happened to have three bananas which shaped a perfect number four. What a, what a treat that was! Very and and they and they were attractive ripe ripe uh, bananas as well, because um, I did. There was a previous version of that where they were quite spotty and <laughs> not not not, not good, banana. but um, a perfect banana. And and so uh, the Sasquatch hand placed it into into the shape of the four, and then it and then it uh, flashed and turned into the number. And then I re- it, it was a cover reveal video, and then I also did one where uh, my friend. Uh, uh, walked through the woods. We we did a spoof of the Patterson Sasquatch right. uh, video, the the classic, you know, the the strolling. Actually, here we go. This pose, you know, this guy, the <laughs> stro- strolling and look. We did we did that, uh, but with Chicken Boy Four in his grasp. And at a certain point in the video, I, I replayed in slow motion, playing a royalty free uh, uh, X Files adjacent music, and. Uh, and then zoomed in on the cover, which was blurry. And then it did like this zoom and enhance thing. And then, and then output it says chicken boy four confirmed, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, it, it, so that, that was fun. I like doing little videos like that and then I'll just put those up. But, but one behind the scenes scenes thing from, uh, the banana video is I'm wearing the costume and filming it at the same time, but I had one hand, uh, from one costume, which was actually affixed to, uh, to the costume and I'm wearing another costume on top of that. Um, that that's like, you know, the, it's, it's a werewolf costume, but it doesn't have the right, you know, so it had the right fur, but not the right hand. Right. And then I have one costume that has the right hand, but not the right fur. So I'm wearing two layers of fur and sweating like a pig as I'm filming and like reaching on, on and off. Um, so it's really funny. Now we've got about 10 minutes left before we wrap this episode up. Aaron, with you being the, the least social media active. Do you have any questions? No, not really. It's not that I don't know the techniques or anything like that. It's just I'm too lazy to do them. <laughs> it's an acknowledged fault. Um, but I'll probably end up building up more of that as I build my tradesman, uh, my contractor webpage as well, because I have to do that for both. So the skill's got to, I've got to bring the skill back up to where it needs to be for multiple things now, not just because, oh, there's that. I have a reason. Therefore, I can get it out of an atrophied state. In yeah. that case, what do you think is the thing that that you most want to want to post? Oh shoot. Um, not to put the, you on the spot. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, really, I'd like to do some. Uh, and this is going to start off on the tradesman site. Um, quick little five minute tool reviews. Oh, I've got cool. a tool back. Uh, right. Um, hey, this is a such and such. I use it for this in HVAC. So kind of an HVAC made easy or electricians. I'm like, hey, and it can be something as simple as I've got this Milwaukee drill. It's great. I use it for this. I made sure to pick up these two items to go with it because I can interchange the heads. All right. Yeah. Um, so this falls under kind of building a toolbox. Uh, one of the things I tell everybody is, hey, if you're going to build a tool bag or anything to work around the house, one twenty dollar tool a week, one hundred dollar tool a month. Um, give up a coffee a couple days, mm. and by the end of two months, you're going to have this nice functional tool bag that's going to work throughout your house. Um, on the writing side, same concept. I've just got to find those, and it may just be one of those. Hey. Reading this book now, I think it's going to work great in this genre. Or, oh, this is a Bram Stoker. It's a great example of 
this writing technique. Um, little things like that. Yeah. And if I can take us back to some of the uh, core concepts here, let's talk about schedule and not scheduling of posts. Oh, yes. That's a little Google thing to find out the best time. By the way, uh, Hootsuite has a wonderful feature where it does auto schedule. So it will post it the best time in the next 12 hours for you or whatever. And that's a nice uh, perk there. But in real life, balancing the time it takes to write and then edit and then create a cover or purchase a cover and work with an artist or whatever you're working on versus the social media versus the live interaction, whether it's responding to that social media or doing events. Make time for each one. Building a schedule in your life, I do this on this day during these hours. Whether you're working a full-time job or multiple jobs, that's going to be the best way to make sure you get these done. The hardest part of that is kicking yourself in your own butt to make sure you actually do it when you have scheduled yourself to do it. Don't right. get lost in that maze of social media um, and because and, it's pretty easy to find, oh, wow, I've just spent six hours tweaking things. And mm -hmm. like any project, there's a point where you have to let go and, and just put it out there. And you can't spend so much time on social media that you can't create. But it is, I won't say a necessary tool because people still win the lottery. But it's whatever right below necessary is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Aaron. Uh, on that note, friggin', there's only 168 hours in a week. Uh, we are small business owners. Uh, the expectation is 60, 70 hours in that week of working on our craft, whatever that happens to be. Um, you still got to sleep. You still have to have recreational time. Otherwise, you get burned out. But when you take that 60 hours and you start knocking it off, okay, I'm going to write for... 30 hours or 20 hours or whatever it happens to be. I'm going to research for five hours. Start adding it up and make sure you've actually dedicated time right. to do that. Yeah. Um, and as an example, and just using myself as an example here, full-time job, 40 hours. Um, sleeping, 56 hours. I'm at 96 hours now. That only leaves uh, 72 hours of other things, which... I ran a marathon today. That was eight hours just gone, not including the drive time. Right. It, they they start disappearing real damn quick. Mm -hmm. And downtime is important to schedule. That recreation Aaron mentioned. Um, and, and by the way, uh, Tijinter just commented, this is your job. Even And even if you love it, you need to dedicate yourself to it. And, and that is true. But make Very sure true. you do schedule the time away from your computer, especially if you're working only from home, if you're – blessed enough to make a living off this i've heard so many authors just in the past week alone tell me they never have time for anything else they're always writing the next thing that's not healthy make sure you schedule time where your computer is not on or if it's on you're playing a video game and just relaxing go watch that thing on netflix or get out of the house and go to a park and take a walk get some exercise all these things are super important. <clears throat> don't break yourself because if you break yourself, you don't have the energy to do what you're loving doing. Um, That's a very good point. Any closing thoughts? Because we're going to do some outro music here in a minute. That was a fantastic closing thought. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> so good luck with it all. If you have questions, you can always contact us or else if you want to just throw a birthday wish or a personal message at somebody who – watches the show whether it's on the podcast or whether it's here live at twitch.tv slash travis tavern talk you can email us at right night show at gmail.com that's w-r-i-t-e-n-i-g-h-t show at gmail.com and we will take a look at that and possibly even read it live on air for you um Let's see, do we have any other closing stuff? I want to say thank you for all the support to everybody who watched us live. Thank you for all the comments. To Jinter, it was good to see you. Um, word to win. And, uh, aww. To Jinter says, love your work. I'll hopefully get to see more of you all next week. Don't forget, you can catch us on the podcast. We're on uh, 
Amazon and Google and Apple and Spotify and Spreaker and iHeartRadio and a lot of different places. Do want to thank Spacey Tracy for the bits and everybody else for the follows, being here, the subs, and all that kind of support. Okay, we're going to get out of here. You guys have a great night, and we will catch you again next time. <laughs> oh, look at that. Hold on. we got to do a quick uh, raise a glass here to Gina there, who just uh, gifted Mike a sub. There you go. Hey, thank you. This is my favorite channel. <laughs> you guys have a great night. We'll catch you again next time. Thank you for joining author Travis I. Sivart and the other writers, content creators, and all around amazing people for our discussion here on Night. <laughs> Join us again soon, and until you do, make sure you create with passion, enjoy the journey, and remember, every night can be right now. With MailChimp, you get more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. With things like data-driven recommendations and powerful automation tools. Get started today at MailChimp.com smartmarketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses.